from the, uh, the same title, To Die For. Amen? To Die For. And we need to know the benefits of living in Christ and his will for our lives so much that we understand it and know the risk if we're not willing to die for it. Amen? Amen. So here's a question. How much do we value Christ? And are we really willing to lose it all for him? And only you can answer that question. Again, are you willing to die to everything in order to fully gain him. And as our uh, brother, uh, Minister Larry, mentioned, our foundation scripture is Philippians 3. And I'm going to read verses 6 through 9. Philippians 3, verses 6 through 9. And I'm going to read out of the uh, New English translation. And if you have the Message Bible, oh my gosh. Or if you don't have a Message Bible, I encourage you to put that on your Christmas list. The Message Bible, oh gosh, it just really, really breaks it down for you. But this is the New English translation. Verse 6, Philippians 3 and 6. In my zeal for God, I persecuted the church. According to the righteousness stipulated in the law, I was blameless. So this was the Apostle Paul following everything that the law was telling him to do. Right. Amen? Amen? Verse 7. But these assets I have come to regard as liabilities because of Christ. So he was willing to lay everything down. The law, religion, everything down to get closer to Christ. Amen. Verse 8. More than that, I now regard all things as liabilities compared to the far greater value of knowing Christ. So again, are we willing to lay it all down to get to know God even more? Hallelujah. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things indeed, I regard them as dung. And we know dung is common, or manure of any sort, okay? Cow, dog, doesn't matter, okay? That I may gain Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not because I have my own righteousness derived from the law, but because I have the righteousness that come by the way of Christ's faithfulness, a righteousness from God that is in fact based on Christ's faithfulness. So we can become so zealous, so enthusiastic about doing something, even religious things, that we can become uh, so religious that we're no longer spiritual beings, okay? Because religious people will adopt a certain dogma or a certain set of beliefs. But spiritual people, they want to be able to adopt the consciousness of God. So when we operate and do things, we're doing it based on his principles and not based on all of these religious rules that people are telling us that we should be living by. So we should consider everything, as the Apostle Paul said, as a liability compared to knowing God. Because again, it's all dumb when we compare it to him. And God should have more value in our lives than anything else. And I don't care what it is. It could be degrees, career, your spouses, your family, your homes, your cars, I don't care what it is, it shall all come second to God. Amen? But are we willing to risk it all to fully gain Him? Are you willing to die to yourself daily to truly gain Him again? So sometimes we have to look at the benefits or to know what we're risking in order to be able to know if we're truly doing what we should be doing. Meaning, do we really hold him in that highest regard the way that we should? Because if we don't really know the value that he has in our lives, then sometimes we don't know what we're missing out on or what we should be uh, laying to the side so we can risk it all for him. And there are many, but I'm only going to address 10 of them today. So there are many benefits of knowing Christ, but I'll address 10. 
So if you want to take notes, just number one to ten, I'll give you a principle, and then you can put the scripture on the right side of it. Amen. Amen. So the first thing is a personal relationship. That means we have a friend in him. We can talk to him all times of the day and night. All hours of the day and night. Amen. Amen. And you know you have some of those friends. Don't call my house after 11. Don't call my house after 10 o'clock. You know I'm going to be in the bed. Amen. God doesn't have that time limit on us. He's, a, he's able to, you know, just receive a, a, a call from us in the middle of the night. 2, 3 in the morning. Now as preachers, we have to be able to be available for those types of calls. So when people called me at 2, 3 in the morning, now when my parents were living, I always thought it was an emergency with them. But now that they're gone, I still have to avail myself for those 2, 3 you know, phone calls to be able to pray with somebody. Because people are going through. Y'all don't realize that. People are going through. Amen? Um, and part of uh, one, that personal relationship, it's, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we can see that in Proverbs 18, 24, and the second part of that verse. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen? Yeah. And still dealing with that personal relationship, it tells us that he would never leave us, nor would he forsake us. Yeah. And we can see that in uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 6. In the Old Testament, but also Deuteronomy, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. So anytime something shows up in both the Old and the New Testament, we need to be paying attention to it. Right. Amen? Amen? We need to follow everything that God's Word tells us. But when God repeats himself, we need to be paying special attention to that. Amen? Amen. So the second principle, a second benefit of knowing Christ is that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. So we know that the Holy Spirit is Christ's promise to us. He said, I'll leave. When I leave, I'll send a comforter for you. So in God's, in Christ's physical absence, he left us with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's job is to guide and to intercede for us. And we can see that in Romans 8 and 26. Because it's not important enough to know the principle, you also need to know where you can find this in the Word. Because the Word is what's going to get us through. Amen? Yeah. It ain't going to be what Big Mama taught us back then. It's going to be standing on the Word of God. Amen? Amen? So let's look at our third principle, our third benefit. We have transformative powers. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm dating myself, so Mason, he's probably going to look at me like, what? What is that about? But there was a cartoon called Transformers. Anybody remember that? You do? Okay, yeah, we got a couple of people that remember that. If Transformers, more than meets the eye, and then they would transform, these robots would transform into the, you know, uh, cars, semi-truck, you know, or whatever. Okay, and then it will allow them to ex escape or, or to get away. Okay, but when we're talking about transformative powers as it relates to our Christianity, we need to be talking about transforming ourselves to the image of God. Amen. And we can see that in Galatians 5 and 22. Let's turn there. Galatians 5 and 22. And these are the fruits of the Spirit that we should just be walking by daily, all the time. We should be incorporating the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, or could be patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, or yours may say, temperance, okay? So that's what we need to be transforming ourselves as we are operating our daily lives into the image of Christ. Amen? Amen. Our fourth benefit is peace. God gives us 
peace. That we can live a life without worry. Amen? Because we may not understand everything that's going on in this day and age. Especially the craziness that's going on in the world. With all these school shootings, you got cyberbullying where people are committing suicide just based on what somebody said about them online. Okay? You got policemen and police women gunning down innocent people. We can't always explain that type of stuff away. Amen? But what we can look at is Romans 8 and 28, when it says all things will work out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called by his purpose. So although we can't understand it and we can't explain it oftentimes, we know that everything is going to work out for his need. Amen? Amen? Our fifth benefit is hope. God gives us hope in Christ Jesus. And I tell you, there's nothing like hope. Imagine a life of hopelessness. But God, he gives us, as it says in uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. I think this is Saturday's favorite scripture. God plans to give us a future filled with hope. Amen. That second part of that scripture. He gives us a future filled with hope. Now when God makes plans, we need to just buy into that. Whatever he plans for our lives, we need to buy into that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our sixth uh, benefit, our church family. Now, I know church folk get on your nerves. I mean, let's just be honest, because everybody don't act right just because they're in the church house, okay? Everybody, when they leave the church house, they still supposed to be your church family. You see them, I, I, I'll give you an example. I had called a lady, uh, and I, she was telling me how she wanted to be active. I want to do this in the church. I want to do that. I said, okay. I called her. Hello. I said, hey, this is Sister Akina. Who? This is Sister Akina. Who? I said, I'm, you know, I go to your church. And I saw the light skin one to sit up front. Oh, okay. Huh? I said, well, you said you wanted to be involved, you know, in the church. Would you like to be an usher? Would you like? Uh, let me think about it. I'll call you back. And I'm like, you're supposed to be my sister in Christ. You're the one that get you involved. And then I give you an opportunity and you so dry. Don't even, I mean, she ain't even like some people, they, they, they answer the phone. Praise the Lord. So they already let you know. I'm ready. Amen. She answered the phone so dry. Hello. And then when I told her who I was, she didn't even get excited. And then don't get excited just about me. Get excited about serving. Get excited about an opportunity. She was just like, I'll call you back. Now, this was probably 2001. I ain't heard from me yet. Okay, man. But I'm just saying, church people, will, can, they can kind of work your nerves if, if you let them. Amen? So all you got to do is just pray for them. Amen? So let's look at first uh, Timothy, Timothy 5, 1 and 2. <laughs> Mr. Mary said, that's enough. <laughs> 1 Timothy 5, 1 and 2. When we're thinking about church members, we have to treat each other as family. Now, only treat me as family if you love your family. If you ain't really feeling your family, then I don't need you to treat me like your family member, okay? But it tells us how to behave in 1 Timothy 5, 1 and 2 as we regard our elders. Okay? Because we need to, you know, glean some wisdom from our elders. Amen? Right, amen. It tells us what we need to be doing to our small children. Yeah. We shouldn't do anything, as Scripture tells us, to provoke them. We should be training them up. Amen? Yeah. So it tells us what we need to be doing as we, as we treat our family members. Amen? Yeah. So, I'm winding down. Our seventh principle uh, is discipline. And that is in uh, Hebrew 12 and 6. Hebrew 12 
and six.